So to determine the optimal tree, that is the size of the tree that's going to give us the optimal results on unseen data, in R they use a technique called cross-validation. Okay. Now this is somewhat advanced in terms of concept, so uh, you don't need to try and, you know, if you find it difficult, you can let it go because uh, it's a little advanced, but it might be worthwhile for you to take a look at this. Uh, I've explained this uh, not in detail, but if you look at the second lab on uh, uh, classification trees, we did talk, take a look at how to interpret the results of classification data. Okay, so in all our training data, we already know that the total error or deviance is 478,514, but that was across 20 cases. Right, there were 20 rows. So on the average, the deviance is 23,926, which is 478,514 divided by 20. Okay. Now, in cross-validation methods, what they do is they take all the training data and split it up, let's say, into 10 equal parts randomly. Okay. Remember, in partitioning, we partitioned into two or three partitions. Similarly, they take the training data itself and create 10 random partitions from the training data, right? Then what they do is they first consider nine of those 10 as training. Now all this is happening within training and the last one as the test, right? Then they build a tree model using the data from the first nine partitions, right? And then test out how it performs on the 10th partition. That is they calculate the deviance on the 10th partition or the RMS error if you like. Okay, so that's going to provide one result of performance, right? Uh, for, you know, they do this, with, let's say you have a tree with only one node, what is the result? A tree with two nodes, what is the result? And so on. Okay, so initially for one leaf, they do this, right? So again, for one leaf, they repeat the same process. So what will happen is, for one leaf, we'll have 10 trials because every time we, we have 10 partitions, we leave out one as test and we use the remaining nine as training. We build the tree on the remaining nine, right? So with one leaf and 10 trials, you get 10 different error values, right? Because for, uh, for each of the trials, you will get a separate error value. So we calculate the mean of the error values and the standard deviation of the error values. And we repeat the process now for two leaves. Again, for two leaves, same thing. The same partition, leave out one of the partitions, build a tree with the remaining nine, and compute the mean, uh, compute the error. And then again, for, you know, same two leaves, 10 trials, leave out one of the other 10, and take the remaining nine and do it. So again, you get 10 error values. Compute the mean and the standard deviation. And so on for all tree sizes. That process is called cross-validation. So in the net result of that is you're going to get the tree size in number of leaves for, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, etc., depending upon how many ever uh, nodes you considered. And you would see the error on all the data for that particular tree size. And then you get the cross-validation error, the average, and the standard deviation that we calculated. So the result might look something like this. Okay. So this is the number of uh, the size of the tree, which is the number of nodes. Okay, forget the CP for the time being. This is the number of splits. Okay, and this is the average cross validation error and the standard deviation. Okay, and this error is taken as a proportion of the root node error. We already know the root node error is 478,000. So this is the uh, total error as a proportion of the root node error. Obviously, if you have only one node, then your total error is going to be the root node error. So therefore, that's one. And if you have two nodes, then we already saw that the deviance reduces. And that's what you're seeing here. So this is as a proportion of the total. So the deviance keeps on reducing. Okay. So here, in this case, the root node error is uh, 23,926. And that's what this is. And all of these are proportions of 23,926. Okay, so error on all data as proportion of the root node error. This is the cross validation error again as a proportion of root node. This is the standard deviation. Okay, 
and this proportion tells you the error reduction by the split right so for example if you take 1 minus 0.73 is 0 0.26 right again 0 0.26 minus 0 0.096 is 0 0.166 etc okay so that's the error reduction by carrying out that particular split okay so this is what you have we tried from uh, you know one node up to 10 nodes and this is what we got now the tree that we want to choose is the one with the minimum error so we might say that we'll choose the tree with the minimum error from this column but that turns out to be you know as you keep on going down it will keep on reducing so the general principle is to take the tree with the error which is minimum of the standard of the cross validation error plus the standard deviation corresponding to it right so uh, so that value is going to be 13000 you know 0.13636 plus point uh, 050713 right and you get 0 0.187 uh, 187073 and this is the tree whose value is less than this the first tree with the value less than this right so here you see 0 0.18 uh, this one is above 0 0.187073 this is below that so we will choose a tree with eight nodes that is going to be our optimal tree right this is just a, a rule of thumb we use we find the minimum cross validation error find out its corresponding standard deviation add it up and choose the first tree whose cross validation error is less than this chosen value okay so that's how it works another way to do this instead of looking at the table and doing computations etc in R you can generate this it's called plot CP we'll see that later you can generate the plot and from the plot you see that you've got this line okay and choose the value which is the first value below the line okay so in this case that first value below the line leads to eight a tree size of eight okay which is what we got in the previous slide tree size of eight nodes okay so you can use either this approach or you can use this approach okay let's take a look at the code to do this now uh, so vac is read.csv vacation expense.csv install.packages r part because that is what we use for uh, any kind of tree building and then uh, install.packages these two packages you have already installed so you really don't need to run these two commands because you have already installed the packages and we do library r part library r part dot plot that's what you need to do you don't need to do these two because when you did classification trees you already installed these two okay so we are building a model by saying build me a model to predict expenditure based on all other attributes so expenditure till day dot data is back and if you want regression trees you need to say method equals ANOVA for classification trees we never said anything about method because the system by default will do it right so here we are saying method equals ANOVA and like before we are doing min bucket and uh, CP okay so we are doing min bucket is 1 and CP is 0 because what we are basically saying is let's build the whole tree the complete tree and then we'll go and find the optimal value okay so we are generating the full tree in general this is not practical because if you have thousands and thousands of rows of data your full tree will become huge so we'll have some value for min bucket as you know 20 or 30 or something or we can use min split as we saw earlier okay so now we've got the tree here right so back dot tree is our tree and we can print the tree by doing PRP uh, this is just like before we are using the PRP function to print the tree and the tree comes out like this okay this is the tree with 10 nodes that we saw earlier this is the complete tree okay now as we already saw the complete tree may not be the optimal tree optimal tree will be somewhat smaller Let, let's try to figure out how to do that right we already saw the technique you can do print cp vac dot tree which will give you this textual printout and then like we discussed earlier you could find the minimum cross validation error and its standard deviation add it up and arrive at the fact that your optimal tree has got to have eight nodes 
or you can do plot cp which i have not shown here but you can use the command plot cp which will give you this plot and from this you can try to find the size of the optimal tree okay so this again as before we saw that uh, this is the node which is just below the line so 8 is our correct value right so now we can do and this is achieved by doing plot cp back dot tree okay so we want to now select the tree with eight leaf nodes to do that we use the prune function and we use this value where did that value come from well it came from plot cp plot cp corresponding to the node size 8 the the cp value was 0 0.0098 and that's why we are doing a pruning with 0 0.0098 so we prune the tree and then again print, print the pruned tree okay so the prune tree has eight nodes as we expected so this is what we say is the optimal tree for us we already know that we can have the tree output printed or we can have the tree output in textual form and the textual form corresponds one to one with the printed output right so for example you've got the node numbers here and these numbers correspond to the node numbers right so node number one says root 20 because we have n equals 20 20 cases this is the total deviance 478.1513.8 so that's the deviance the deviance is not shown here and then it says the predicted value is 591.75 or rounded to 592 okay so this is the result of the first split less than 94950 and that has 12 cases so you see the 12 here and uh, its deviance is 79566 as we saw from the diagrams earlier and its predicted value is 483 so that's what you see here right and take this third node number node number three is here and again its uh, split is income greater than or equal to from 94950 so it's on the right hand side it's got eight cases n equals eight and we know from before that its deviance is 446,321 and its predicted value is 754 okay so this is really how you interpret the textual interpretation uh, textual output versus the graphical output let's do an example uh, with a larger data set so we have our Boston housing data set and we want to predict, of course, the MEDV, the median value of a household in a neighborhood. So we read it to library carrot set seed 2015. Then we partition the data, do training and test. Okay, so now what we are going to do is to build a model on the training data. So we do our usual. So this time we are using min split is 20 and CP is 0, right? That is because building the whole tree with min split as zero is not practical for a large data set like this okay this data set has 500 rows so if you create the complete tree your tree will become huge so we are saying min split is 20 that means in order to split a node it must have at least 20 cases so ultimately your leaf node should have at least 20 cases it cannot have below 20 cases which makes sense because we are trying to take the average and taking the average of a large number of cases is much better than taking the average of a very few cases because that will not be representative of the real data okay other than that this command is exactly the same as before earlier we said min split is one okay which means there is no limit on splitting so you build the tree we plot the tree right we print the tree of course as expected it's a huge tree look at the number of leaf nodes there were so many leaf nodes that we had to put it in two different rows right there are more than 20 leaf nodes clearly the tree is too big and needs to be pruned so to prune the tree we are going to do plot cp right so in plot cp we see that the first point below the line is this with nine uh, nine nodes okay so we're going to prune it with the value of 0 0.0074 okay so tree with nine leaves is the optimal tree and its corresponding cp value is 0 0.0074 so 
again we print the tree if we want and we can again do the cross validation calculation the minimum cross validation error is this 0.22903 and then we add its corresponding standard deviation we get 0.263803 and the first node that is smaller than that is the node with nine the tree with nine nodes okay so we got the same results using plot cp or print cp and calculations so we might as well just use plot cp because that's a lot easier we can just visually look at it find the cp value to use for pruning and directly go ahead and prune it okay so we prune it with the value 0 0.0074 because that's the value corresponding to to this 0 0.0074 here okay so we use 0 0.0074 and prune the tree so now we get a pruned tree and we expect that the pruned tree will have only nine nodes right so all of these are just you know some attributes for prp that i have figured out which give us a nice neat tree so as we expected we've got nine nodes here and this is our optimal tree okay so we can look at uh, again, we can just cross validate, cross check our calculations here. So we can look at this. So here the prediction for the root node with only one node is 23, which means that should really be the average of all the cases. So if you do mean of train dollar MEDV, the average turns out to be 23, right? And if you do, uh, this is all the cases that have uh, RM less than 6.8, right? So therefore the prediction here 20 should be the average of all the cases with rm less than 2.5 so if you do mean train of train dollar rm less than 6.8 medv indeed that average turns out to be 20 okay and you can check this as well right so here i'm just showing you that uh, the value that you've got here is nothing but the average of the target attribute for all the cases that satisfy the conditions for that node that's just it, you know, just like what we discussed up front. So this is our pruned tree. And number of rows in the training partition is 356. And clearly that says that the tree was built with 356 nodes, 356 cases. And the number of rows for cases that satisfy uh, the, the splitting condition for row 2 is 289. And sure enough, you see 289 right here. And if you're looking at the deviation, you know, sum of, uh, you know, the, the, the deviance for node 2, you can calculate that. Okay. So you can see that all of these numbers that we are calculating for node 2, the deviance is shown here as 10,954. This is the deviance for the, uh, for the root node. You can calculate all of that and verify that whatever we discussed earlier, uh, really matches up with the textual output. Okay, so now we can do uh, the predictions for the training, calculate the root mean square error. So to do the predictions for training, pred.train is predict bh.tree dot pruned because that was our pruned tree. Okay, this should be just bh.pruned, not dot pruned, bh.pruned and train and you'll get the RMSE for training. You can do the RMS error for the test and so on. This is all stuff that we've done before. Okay, so that concludes our discussion of regression trees. Uh, pay close attention to the initial slides. You don't have to pay too much attention to the actual method of cross-validation other than to see what method you use to select the optimal tree, which is essentially use the plot CP function Okay, I'm just jumping, uh, yeah, use the plot CP function and select the optimal tree based on the first value that is just below the line. Okay, and then use that value here to do the pruning. Okay, so you can just do that mechanically, uh, but this cross-validation tree was obtained by the process of cross-validation that I explained earlier, which is a little technical. You can, you can ignore that, just see how this is going on. So this is the method you use to select your optimal tree. 
Okay, so that concludes our discussion of regression trees.